Misson bowls again, and Kanai is off the mark with a flashing square cut which brings him three runs to open his account. Kanai scored a scintillating double century on this ground against Victoria six weeks ago, and looks to be set for another big score in this test match. When Nurse faces Misson, a shot to square leg brings a single, and this is unexpectedly increased to five when Martin's return to the bowler's end goes through for four overthrows. A pleasant change of luck for the West Indies after their early misfortune. Davidson again, and Nurse's shot into the covers is fielded by 12th man Klein, fielding substitute for the injured Mackay. Kanai is obviously prepared to attack the bowling, and once he beats the close slip field, it's a fairly safe bet that umpire Hoy will eventually signal a boundary. Davidson is bowling with plenty of life, but Kanai is in brilliant form, and his fluent off drive brings him another three runs. It's a great recovery by the West Indians and is fully appreciated by the suntan crowd. Misson continues bowling to three slips and two gullies, hoping for the batsman to find an edge, but with Kanhai almost everything is hit plumb in the middle. Nurse, on the other hand, is content to let the runs come, but he's playing an extremely useful innings for his side, and in Davidson's next over, a cut through the slips adds four to the score. Davidson's reply is not long in coming, but Nurse sees the bouncer all the way, and the fast left-arm bowler has Nurse playing him defensively during the remainder of the over. After four overs from the southern end, Misson gives way to Australian captain Richie Benno, and Kanhai watches the leg spinner carefully before attempting to play any, any of his strokes against him. Nurse, too, is quite content to treat Benno with respect, as the West Indies are still very much in the innings building stages. After 50 minutes of play, Kanai and Nurse have added 38, and the total stands at 2 for 39. Davidson bowls on in the scorching Melbourne sun, and Kanai greets him with an equally scorching off drive that burns its way over the green grass to the boundary. Lovers of cricket are loud in their praises of the superb stroke making of Rowan Kanhai. When Davidson bowls again to Nurse, central figure is wicketkeeper Wally Grout, whose diving save adds to the interest of the morning's cricket. Twelve eager hands wait for Seymour Nurse to make a rash stroke against Davidson, but Nurse just won't be tempted. As the field changes over and Benno bowls again to Kanhai, there's more action and more runs. Nurse tries to emulate his more dashing partner, but the single just isn't there. When Benno calls Johnny Martin into the attack to relieve Davidson, the move is greeted by a burst of applause from the enthusiastic crowd. Their enthusiasm matches that of Martin, spinning the ball from hand to hand in characteristic fashion and anxious to get on with the job. Martin's first ball in test cricket is a good one. It must be when a batsman of the calibre of Kanhai is forced onto the defensive. But you can't keep a good batsman down, and Kanhai pulls Martin through mid-wicket, sending Richie Benno on a fruitless chase to the boundary. Four more onto the West Indies total, and Kanhai's innings now in full flower. Kanhai square cuts again for a single, and another blemish in the otherwise excellent Australian fielding results in one overthrow. There's more excitement when Benno bowls and Nurse gives a semblance of a chance to Simpson at slip. It's still heatwave weather, but when light rain begins to fall and the crowd makes for shelter, it seems that the anticipated cool change is soon to become a reality. Nurse continues to play Benno circumspectly, but in typical West Indian fashion, takes runs when they're offering. One of the highlights of the morning's play was Les Favell's returns from the outfield.
But the highlight was the glorious batting of Rowan Canhart. Irresistible batting like this from a man who came to the wicket when his side had lost two wickets for one, chasing a total of 348. This boundary brings up Canhai's 50 and makes the West Indies a much more respectable two for 80. Nurse is not so confident, but is giving Canhai great support and both batsmen score off Martin's next over. At this point, the applause is almost continuous with both batsmen scoring off the spinners. Nurse's shot to deep mid-wicket gives McDonald a long chase and his return from the deep is typical of the Australian out cricket. Three to Nurse brings Kanhai back and while he's at the crease, the cricket's always lively. More evidence of the quality of the Australian fielding is provided when O'Neill's bullet-like return breaks the stumps. Martin again and Kanhai hits him high over mid-wicket for three runs to bring up the West Indies 100 in little worse than even time. A great effort by Kanhai and Nurse considering the position when they came together. Now the West Indies are at least an even chance in their chase after the Australian total. With Kanhai going after the runs, Nurse is doing a first-class job staying with him. In an effort to break the partnership, Benno brings Misson back into the attack, but Kanhai continues to score. One more onto the score when Nurse gets a late call from a miss and no ball and can't put it away. Misson's second spell sees him bowling with only two slips and an accurate over ends with Nurse playing defensively. With lunch approaching, Benno brings leg spinner Bob Simpson into the attack in a further effort to break the partnership which has realised more than a century. That one should have landed in the Olympic stand. For the most part, Simpson bowls wide of the off stump and his first over is a maiden. With the clock showing one minute to one, the umpires decide on one more over before lunch. And in it, Davidson almost ends the stand when he has Nurse playing at and missing an outswinger. Ever on the attack, Benno places himself and Martin close on the leg side in an attempt to entice Nurse, but the Australians can't take advantage of the move as Davidson bowls wide of the stumps. Nurse safely sees out the over from Davidson and as the players leave the field for lunch, the West Indies score stands at 2 for 105, Canai on 69 and Nurse 33. During the lunch break, Melbourne's heat wave ends and down comes the rain. The ground staff is quick to apply the covers and after a break of half an hour, play resumes with Benno bowling to Canhai. As Martin feels, there's ample evidence of how slippery the rain has made the outfield. There's further incident when Canhai deflects the ball to Simpson at slip. Benno seems to think it was a catch, but umpire Eager turns down the appeal and Benno wastes no time in getting on with the game. With conditions made tricky by the damp conditions, the batsmen are on the defensive and Davidson bowls a maiden over to Nurse. After removing some muddy turf from his boots, Benno continues the attack and he too bowls a maiden, this time to Canhai, an over highlighted by a superb return from the covers by Harvey which breaks the stumps. Down comes the rain again and after a signal from the umpires, the covers are again brought onto the ground for a second interruption, this time permanent, as the players race for cover. There's been only half an hour's play since lunch, and in that time, against some accurate bowling, Canai and Nurse have added only three runs. In the meantime, there's some comic relief for the crowd from the inevitable character who invariably appears on the scene to provide entertainment. 
Melbourne Cricket Ground curator Bill Watt isn't speedy enough to bring the offender to justice and it's finally left to the law to take its own course. past the time, but the rain continues and the umpires decide no more play is possible with the West Indies 2 for 108, 240 runs behind the Australian total with 8 wickets standing and 3 days to